Well, hey guys, Silly Tuck here, and welcome back to an episode of ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling. This is episode 36, and this is Hardcore TV. Is it episode 36? I think it is. It's episode 36, right? Yeah. Uh, this is now August 1998. We're getting close to one year in game, which is, um, cool, I guess. Uh... Because when did we start? We started week one of December. So we're not as close uh, as I originally thought because I thought we started in November. But yeah, we're getting close to our biggest show of the year, uh, November to Remember. Uh, not to be confused with December to Dismember. We don't ever want to remember that, ever. Maybe we'll disremember that. Is that... Is that a thing that people... That's not a thing that people say. That doesn't matter, though. Um... So yeah, we're um, we're building to where are we here? Um, our next show, which will be Hostile City Showdown, our next uh, excuse me, our next television special, and that'll be next week or uh, not next week? I think two more weeks, right? God damn it! Hold on. Let's go check. Um, that will be in oh, next week. Okay, so this is the go home already. We're going home again. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Um, it's okay, though. It's fun to have two shows pretty, pretty tight together, back to back. Anyways, like... The next time I'd come to you anyways would be a pay-per-view, so we need some time to build. We need some proper time to build. What week would that be? Week three. So yeah, that's that's about a month and a week to build. I can build a pay-per-view around that. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, we're of course in Hammerstein. Where else would we be? And without further ado, let's run the show. So we're going to open things up with Jerry Lynn, our ECW world champion. And he's going to address what Bam Bam Bigelow said last week. He says... Bam, I heard what you said last week. I heard, I heard how you talked. I heard, I heard how hurt you sounded. And you really feel like I betrayed you. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't something that Bam Bam Bigelow is just saying to try to justify what he did to me, try to justify the fact that he made a bad choice. Trust me, I know, and I've known Bam Bam. At least I thought I knew Bam Bam. That's, that's real. This is real now. Bam Bam Bigelow feels that I have been rubbing in his face that I am world champion. That I beat Shane Douglas. And he could not beat Shane Douglas. Bam Bam. I don't know what to say, pal. It's not the case. I never meant to harm you. I never meant to hurt you. I'm sorry, okay? And I'm sorry that I wasn't more aware of what I was possibly saying, how it could have hurt you. And, I, and I'm sorry about that. So, if you want to talk it out, I'm willing to talk it out. We could do it next week if you wanted to. Me, you, in the ring, face to face, okay. And let, let's just let's just talk, okay. Man to man, friend to friend, okay. Because we we worked this out once before. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. So we open up our show with the world champion Jerry Lynn. Um, fifty D plus, good stuff overall from Jerry. I know he's not the best on the mic, but. Um, I think Lynn, um, I, I like him being the world champ just for now. You know what I mean? I've always thought that the champ should be not the most over guy on the roster. Like there are certain times where you'd clearly want it to be the most over guy in the roster, but I like periods like this when you can put the belt on somebody who's maybe not the most popular guy, who's maybe not the big name of the company, but somebody who, you know, you could give that belt to and help them out a little bit. Um... Random, random bit of psychology on me making Jerry Lynn champion. Uh, we move into a 52D+. Jesus Christ. Okay, we're going to have to, like, repair Guido. 
<laughs> Who? Okay. Uh, in a decent match, Little Guido defeated Mikey Whipwreck in 957 by submission with a Sicilian Crab. So, Little Guido gets a victory in his first match back here in America, and he beats former number one contender for the ECW Television Championship, Mikey Whipwreck. You know, doing good stuff. Guido is proving him. Proving him. And Taz comes out post-match, and he says, Guido, you want a match? You want to you wanna fight me for this belt? Look, quite frankly, I don't know if you've been watching. I don't really know if they get hardcore TV over in Italy or wherever the hell you've been for the past couple months. Actually, I guess I'd say, like, past two months. Where have you been for the past two months? But know this. I've beaten everyone who has stepped up to try to take this belt from me. It has not mattered who it is, where it is, how big they are, how small they are, how fast they are, how slow they are, how technically proficient they are, how bad they are. Everybody gets beat by Taz. So Guido, you want a shot at this title? I've said it to anybody else who's ever asked me for a shot at this belt. From Whipwreck to Spike to Regal to to Credible. Step up. Beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. You're on. So that match will happen in the future. It's not going to happen next week. Uh, I just don't really have the space on the card for next week. We'll, we'll build to it probably a little bit longer. It'll probably be on our next pay-per-view, Anarchy Rules. Uh, that is the next pay-per-view, correct? Yeah, Anarchy Rules. It'll probably be on that show. Um, we can build to this a little, you know what I mean? Make it, make it seem like a big deal. Is it a big deal? Is it a new ECW television champion? You gotta wait, like, a month and two weeks. <laughs> Uh, I, I think that's enough time to build, I think. Uh, 50 D+, plus as uh, we get a main event set, as we're in Paul Heyman's office. We're with Paul, Dreamer, Sandman, Woman, Beulah. And Woman's like, Paul, Paul, you're crazy. Okay, they're not going to say no. And what happens when they say yes? Okay, what happens when the New Era accept the tag match and we go into anarchy rules because it's going to probably be anarchy rules it's not going to be next week i can't build these things that fast i gotta leave some breathing room so what what are we what are we gonna do okay because okay i love tommy and i love sandman but i'm not sure if they're ready for this and dreamers like paul i i i, I she's right okay we're, we're not ready for this me and sandman aren't ready for this okay we've just for the first time put in, put a hole in the armor of the new era Okay, and I don't know if we're ready to just go at them. You know what I mean? With, with the stakes that high, Paul, you're you're fucking crazy. And Heyman's like Tommy. Okay, look, all right. I, I I've trusted you to do your thing. You trust me. I've made a career off of being fucking crazy. This place exists because I'm fucking crazy. I have the plan. Okay. You just do your part. That's all I need. Beat them. Okay? You know what? You two said you weren't ready. That's fine. I've got another team that needs some warm-up. Okay? For the future. Tonight in the main event, Dreamer, Sandman, you're going to take on the ECW World Tag Team Champions. You're going to take on the Dudley Boys. All right? If you wanted a warm-up, there's your warm-up. Okay? Get your chemistry back together. I'm going to need you at Anarchy Rules. So a huge main event is set with Dreamer and Sandman taking on the ECW Tag Team Champions, the boys of Dudleyville, the Dudley boys of Dudleyville. I don't know, the, the demolishers of Dudleyville, the resident Dudleyville demon, deacon, disciple duo. How about that? That sounded fucking terrible, but big main event, big, big, big main event. And we move into a different tag team action. It's a 59C 
wow, this is some really good stuff. Jeff's getting over really, really fast. He's getting really, really good in-ring ratings, too. I'm very excited for this. Uh, and about that, a decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. The Hardy Brothers defeated the Gangstonators in 601 when Matt Hardy defeated John Cross by pinfall with an Omega event. Uh, Jeff Hardy continues to just be crazy good. Matt is Matt is already, like, in the ratings of, like, mid-carters. So he's also doing very, very, very well. Uh, Cronus got better, which is good. I really like Cronus. Um... I think it's fun to have kind of a kind of a fun goofy big guy like Cronus, you know what I mean? Where where Balls is more of like a kind of goofy but like gritty kind of big guy. Like John Cronus is like he's he's like a big jester who plays off of um the straight man New Jack, you know what I mean? And if I didn't completely hate New Jack and if Cronus was worth anything in this mod, they might be in a lot better position than they are now, where they're pretty much just jobber to the star tag team, but I fucking hate New Jack, and Cronus is kind of shit on his own. Trust me, if Perry Saturn ever comes back to this company, the Eliminators are gonna do big shit, okay? I'm like, I will not, I will not lie to you there. If Perry Saturn ever wants to come back, I will, I will run the Eliminators for sure. Um, and also, Mustafa Saeed, um, He's in my back pocket, okay? Like, he's he's out there. Anybody can sign him. So if Perry ever wanted to come home, boom, we have two tag teams born out of one. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, off that side note, uh, the Hardy Boys, again, just are fucking crazy, high-paced, energetic, charismatic. It's what they do. They're a fun young tag team, and people are really getting into them, you know? Um, they kind of don't look the ECW part, but the thing is, is that both of them wrestle the ECW part, they, they put their bodies on the line, maybe Jeff a little bit more than Matt, Matt maybe a little bit more safer, but, um, Matt certainly is, uh, is a very great talent, um, and they continue to roll here, and, uh, it looks like their role has picked up some attention, what the fuck happened here, weird, weird ass really low rating, why is that? Oh, did I rate the Hardys on Entertainment instead of... Oh, no, I would have rated them on Overness. Yeah, that makes sense now. That's okay. You know what? Because everything is just getting these guys more over, so I'm okay with this. Uh, it's a 34E+, so whatever. I don't care, though. I don't care, I say, as I'm clearly shook. Um, the Dudley boys come out to the ring. Highway to Hell hits. Bubba says, All right. I think we can all see the writing on the walls. We wink, 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 nudge, nudge. Hey, hey, you get that reference right there? You got that reference? Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, but I think we can all see the writing on the walls when we say that you two are part of the future of this tag team division. Jeff and Matt, I take my hat off to you. You might be the best duo of brothers in all of ECW. Aside from me and Devon, of course. There's a reason why we have these straps. There's a reason why we're in the main event against two of the top stars in this company. Because, quite frankly, we are two of the top stars in this company. But there's another team. Another team that's been fighting to get their shot. And we introduced you to them. To the entire ECW faithful. About a month ago now. Maybe, maybe a month and a bit. I think it's about a month and a week, actually. Uh, just over a month ago now. And that's the Stormtroopers. So me and Devon have been talking to Paul Heyman. And the reason why we needed a warm-up tonight is because we've been... We've been relaxing for a little while, you know? Kind of letting the tag team division kind of reshape itself, figure out where the rankings are, and... Of course, you and the Troopers are at the top. But we like you, and we think that Lance and Chris are very good. We think all four of you are very good. So, we've talked to Heyman, and we're going to do a best of five series between the four of you, the Hardy Brothers, and the Stormtroopers, and whoever comes out victorious gets to challenge us for these tag team championships. And I think I'm going to try to aim so that the final match of the tournament is, um, or not the tournament, the best of five series, is at Anarchy Rules. So we could, excuse me, um, 
Hold on, am I stupid? Oh my god, Anarchy Rules is in October. Okay, scratch everything that I've said. Whatever our September event is. I forgot September was a fucking month. I'm an idiot. Um, but we'll try to end it kind of there. Hopefully, maybe we'll see how that works out, okay? But just know, and this is back in Bubba, and your next, no, your first match between the four of you is next week at Hostile City Showdown. Best of luck. So, boom, we have a massive, massive announcement regarding the Tag Team Championships. We're going to have a best of five. Best of five. Count them. One, two, three, four, five. Series to determine the number one contender for the ECW World Tag Team titles currently held by those men, the Dudley Boys. We're going to see Jeff and Matt, the Hardy Brothers, take on Lance Storm and Chris Candido. Storm and Candido, the Stormtroopers, one of the highly skilled best tag teams in this company one of the quickest moving technical mastermind totally fucking amazing tag teams in the entire company taking on fast rising sky climbing wheel and dealing eyebrow peeling uh if you smell la 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 what the rock is cooking. I, they're going to face the Hardys, okay? Hardy Brothers versus the Stormtroopers, and that kicks off next week. Uh, and finally, Sabu responds to Shane Douglas. It's Bill Alfonso, and he's with Sabu, and they're like in like the parking lot or something like that. Bill says, Okay, Shane. You've been jumping Sabu now for the past couple weeks. We get it. You think that you deserve another shot. So, me and Sabu are going to give you that opportunity next week. Be there or miss it forever. In the main event of Hostile City Showdown, Sabu wants you so he can finally fucking get away from you and your fucking insanity. And I'm trying to see right now, this is like, in character, what a good match type for them would be. And I think we might just go... We might go for something... Something kind of like... Some kind of like, parking lot brawl type match, hearkening back to when... Um, we might do a parking lot brawl of some kind, harkening back to when, um, Shane Douglas and Sabu ran through the backstage area, and that might be our main event. What do you guys think about that? Let me know. Um, the other option really is a street fight, but, actually, you know what? We'll do a street fight. Oh, no, wait, all ECW matches are a street fight. What the fuck am I talking about? These are not stipulation matches. Um... Hold on. Oh, by the way, this is fucking mental. Read this description. Type, uh, type, type A, I believe that is. Death matches where competitors tape both their fists, dip them in glue, and then put their glued fist in pile of glass shards. Then they must fight each other. That's fucking mental. We might just do a tables match or something like that because, I mean, why not? I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Just a, just a tables match? Would you be down to do that? Um... Leave leave suggestions below, but I think I think we're gonna roll with the tables match. Um, but yeah, that's that's gonna be our main event for next week. So we have two matches made up for next week. The start of the tag team best of five series, the Hardy Bo excuse me, the Hardy Brothers and the Stormtroopers and Sabu taking on Shane Douglas. Sabu trying to finally put his rivalry with Shane Douglas behind him, and we move on to our main event. It's the Dudley Boys versus Tommy Dreamer and the Sandman, two of the biggest stars in ECW looking to get ready to get tuned up by facing off against the best tag team in ECW, the ECW World Tag Team Champions Bubba Ray and Devon, the Dudley Boys, who will be victorious. In a 66C+, slightly disappointing for what I was expecting from these guys, but that's okay. 
Um, everybody wrestled really, really, really well. And about that, I had good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd. The Dudley Boys defeated Sandman and Dreamer in 1815 when Bubba Ray Dudley defeated the Sandman by pinfall with a 3D. So... Quite frankly, what I think this boils down to is the fact that the Dudley Boys are an experienced tag team and Dreamer and Sandman are not. They've not teamed together very much, uh, and so I believe that's what allows the Dudley Boys to pick up the victory. Enough said. Um, overall, I'm very excited with this match. Um, it's kind of just an ECW-type match. Lots of weapons, brawling, you know what I mean? Just a, just a good... Um, bloody ECW-type match, you know what I mean? Getting... Getting back to our roots in this series a little bit. Um, very good stuff. Devon improved in a thing, which really is cool. Um, these ratings, though, uh, these in-ring performance ratings are very, very good to see. Everybody really tight together. Um, I'm not shocked by the Sandman rating. I'm shocked by the Devon rating. That's high for what I assumed from Devon. Bubba is the best worker out of these four, which I could agree with. Um, I think Bubba's the best on the mic. The only rivalry he has, of course, is in Dreamer in terms of in-ring work, because I think Dreamer's a little bit more capable in the ring, uh, but I think Bubba's a way better promo, so, um, and also, like, a way better, like, showman, you know what I mean? Um, Bubba, Bubba's got a little bit more, like, charisma to him compared to Dreamer, um, but Bubba's the fucking shit. So anyways, they're not able to do it, but to end out the show... Holy shit, Rob Van Dam friend a new catchphrase. That's awesome, because I've been thinking of adding a new catchphrase to my repertoire for him. Anyways, the new era comes down to the ring. And they're like, hold on, Paul, you're giving us a, t a title shot? A shot at the world championship? Are you joking? Do you know how much power that gives us? No, you are aware. You said last week that that gives us immense power, so why do it? Why do it? Maybe, just maybe, you've seen it. You've seen that we're right. You've seen that the future is the way of the wrestler, not the slacks-wearing t-shirt garbage that this company's bolstered around and shown off to the world, acting like it should call itself Extreme Championship Wrestling. But I digress. And this is Regal talking, um, just so you guys know, with those, with those uh, articulate promos, that's Regal. And he says, but how could we say no? How could we deny an opportunity to leave our mark on this company forever? To change the very fabric that makes this place what it is? Well, what, what, do you, what, what do you say, Rob? Rob says, I couldn't have said it any better on myself, Steve. If you want to deal with when we're world champion, when I'm world champion, you know, that's up to you, Paul. That's up to you. Because when you're messing with the greatest technical mind in the history of this company, Steven Regal, and when you're messing with Rob Van Dam the whole fucking show, Mr. Friday Night, there, there's the new catchphrase, do you notice it? You're dealing with a beast that just cannot be toppled. You're on, Polly. So there it is. The challenge has been accepted at, uh, at probably whatever our, I'm assuming it's going to be house party, I'm not sure though, um, whatever our September event is, the Sandman and Tommy Dreamer will take on Rob Van Dam and Lord Steven Regal in the main event to decide if the New Era will get a title shot in the future for the ECW world title, whoever it may be held by at that point, whether it be Jerry Lynn or somebody else. Overall, good show. Uh, 60C, um, apparently, we were off by one guy, oh, fuck sakes, what the hell, what, what, what one guy could I have cut that didn't really need to be on this fucking show? <sighs> to be fair, it could have been any of these guys, like, whatever though, that's okay, I'm not too shook about that, I used a fair bit of tag teams, um, I used a lot of tag teams, actually, 
So, that's okay. Literally, I'm not stressing about nothing. It was just kind of weird, because, like, in order to not get that penalty, right, I would have had to put um, the Stormtroopers on the show so I could get Dom Marie in there, and, like, that just kind of felt forced, you know what I mean? Because we saw them last week, and the angle didn't really need them. There's Hector Garza, who I think is... He's talented. Um, but, yeah, you know, overall, I kind of knew that that penalty might be a thing, but I thought we might have just been able to slip away with it, but... We weren't. That's okay. No worries. No problemo. And uh, what's up with the Fed? Uh, DX is going to feud with Mankind and the Undertaker. That's cool. Um, the Fed is offering a paper appearance deal, I think. Oh, no. Liger's going to fuck off. Well, hello. Um, that's good to know. He's already on my short list, yeah? Yeah, he is. Um, that's really good to know, actually. I'm gonna keep that in my back pocket. Um, I'm gonna keep that deep in my back pocket, actually. I might use that very, very soon. Um, are we sure that they haven't made an offer to... Yeah, well, they haven't. Um, any recent offers have already been rejected. That's pretty cool. Uh, he'd be quite a hefty pay, though. Would he be the highest pay i think on our roster if we were to bring him in i'd only bring him in for like one short appearance or so what's bam bam making uh oh yeah he'd definitely be the highest pay on our roster he'd have to be like a one night special attraction which could work um but i don't know if we're quite ready to pull that off yet you know what i mean i just don't think we're quite quite what i don't think we're quite ready to uh go all in on that type of stuff yet if that makes any sense to you guys um, how long is RVD of his contract? Oh, yeah, tons of time. Um, something I might look at here off screen is just when people's deals are up and whatnot, just because, you know, I'll have to pay people probably a lot of money. Oh, not that much money. That's still 700 per appearance. Um, why the fuck are you on a written deal? Did I sign him written? Or was he already written? I could have him for 900 per show instead of 3,000. The fuck is wrong with me? I'm an idiot. The fuck? <laughs> um, I'm just checking over stuff, though, because, like... I assume some people are going to go up a lot. Like... Jeff's going up about 100. Jerry's making about what he wants because we just renewed his deal. Um... Uh, wow, nobody's really going up all that much. It's only like about a hundred bucks for everybody, what I'm seeing here. Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks for everybody pretty much consistently across the board. Um, there's 150. Yeah, I knew that Van Damme would be a lot more. Um, Sabu wants about the same, Douglas wants the same. Because I was wondering, like, oh, man, when we have to, like, you know, renew everybody's contract and stuff like that, this this stuff could start fucking breaking my back, right? You know what I mean? With terms of, like, costs. But, like, everybody's pretty much making what they're making now. So that's probably going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Overall, we're looking good. We're looking great. We're making money again this month after one show. We've made about 3.7K. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, of course, you know, there will be some fees later on or whatever, the production stuff, but, uh, we won't probably have a huge uptick in production stuff because we don't have, uh, we have a pay-per-view this month, so we'll probably look at about, like, 36k, 36.7k in, uh, in show costs, um, but the, but the same in most areas. Um, our merchandise is going up every single month. Say over last month, it was down a little bit. That's disappointing. That's okay. You're going to have up and down months, I guess. Um, overall, though, oh, no, it went, it went down before. It was up, 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 down, down, up, up. So, yeah, you know, no real no real complaints here. No real worries, I don't think. We're making money, and that's, that's really all that matters, I think, at this point. Um, our sponsors keep bringing in that cash, and that's really important to us. Our TV revenue is staying about the same. Our ticket sales, 
uh, are about the same, but they'll go up every once in a while due to like pay-per-view events and all that. But overall, things are looking good for the future. I'm really happy. Um, next episode, everyone, it's another special. And hold on, I want to check. Is that going to be our September event? It will be. It'll be House Party. Um, so yeah, Hostile City Showdown is our next big event. That'll be our next episode, actually. So um, I'll see you guys then. Without further ado, if you want to see what happens between the six days in between this ECW and the next ECW, uh, Hardcore TV, that is, um, or I guess between this Hardcore TV and uh, Hostile City Showdown, the fuck, I don't, I feel like I've called it House Party a couple times, I'm like off my fucking rocker, um, but yeah, no, um, if, if you want to see that stuff, um, yeah, go, go ahead and uh, follow my Twitter. It's in the uh, banner at the top of my channel. Uh, you can scroll back through a couple things. I tweet general wrestling stuff. Um, typically. Typically. Sometimes I tweet the odd other thing. Um, but. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this silly talk. Signing out.